Flexigons are a staple of recreational mathematics, but it's always the hexaflexigon that you see. One based on a hexagon, it's got six edges. And so, I, you know, someone called Vihart has made a whole series of videos about these things. I'm gonna go for the forgotten flexigon, the tetraflexigon, one with four edges. And to make it, we're gonna use a square of paper. So the first step is to fold it in half, uh, whichever way you want, they're both the same. And one of the reasons why I love the tetra flexigon is you don't need any glue. If you're making any of the hexaflexigons, you have to get some glue and stick bits together, whereas this one is just folding and cutting. So the first half and half has split it into uh, four sections long ways. I'm now gonna fold it up this way. And if I make the creases really like good creases, because they're gonna kind of be used as hinges later, I should end up with, here we go, it's a piece of paper now split into 16 smaller squares. I'm gonna remove the center four squares. I'm gonna keep this ring of 12 squares intact. I'm gonna take these middle ones out. You could do that by stabbing the scissors in and just cutting around. But as we learnt from Katie Steckles in her fold and cut theorem video, you can do anything you want in a single cut if you're a bit clever about how you fold it. So one cut down there, come on. And we get, that's not bad. Okay, there's the center, four squares gone. We can get rid of those. And uh, now we've got the 12 on the outside. So this is now gonna be uh, three easy steps and one difficult step. So we start on the left and we go around clockwise. First step is easy, take the four on the outside, fold them up and over, everything should line up. Second step is we come around, take the three at the top, Fold them up and over, and they come down like that. Next step, as we keep coming around, take these three, fold them up and over, and that is the end of the easy steps. The only difficult step is when you take up the bottom ones, you wanna lift these up as if we did it before that first fold, because we want this to be symmetric, so there's no beginning or end. So what you've gotta do is move the original fold out of the way without ruining it, then lift this one up, and make sure the bit next to it goes underneath. So we kinda of take all of this bit next to it and just feed it through until it's underneath and the rest should follow and just kind of snap into place and there you are. There is your four edged flexigon, the tetra flexigon. So what's amazing about the tetra flexigon is it's got a lot of faces. So we've got face one on the front here which I'm gonna number with ones and then if we fold it over, okay so ones on the fronts, we've got twos on the back. So face one and face Two. So you got twos on that face, okay, you got ones on that face, and then on the other side of the ones, we've got, well, it's blank. So we'll label that with uh, three. So that's face three. So this is a shape with at least three faces. We got face three there, we got face one there, and we got face two there. And what happens is every time you fold it closed one way, so I'm folding the ones closed with the twos on the outside, I can open it up on the opposite side. So it closes this way, but then I open it the other way around and I get a new face. And so I'm gonna label that one. Where have I gone so far? I've got one there, I got two there. Let's label this one four. And then let's see if we fold this this way. No, go that way. We go this way. There's another one, there's five. We are looking for six faces, because if we think of the original shape we made, there's my ring of 12, so there's 12 on the front, there's 12 on the back, so I've got 24 of these little squares. I'm using up four for each one, so if I divide that by four, I get six. So there are enough squares to make six. Whether or not it does is a slightly different question. Four is there. Oh, there it is, there's six. Okay. So I'm not gonna label this one here, six. And if we actually wanna check that we've got all of them, face two, fold it in, face one, fold it in, face three, okay. Uh, we can pull the whole thing apart. So if we pop it back out again, disassemble it. There we go, okay, so there's all the face. We've numbered every single square at some point to make all of them. There are two different ways to put this back together. And if you do it the wrong way, you will get the mirror image kind of what we started with. The, f the numbers won't line up again, but if I carefully put it back together, the same way we folded it originally, uh, we're back to where we started. There we go. So, oops. I got caught. Oh, 
And once you make one of these, it's kind of fun. You play with it for a while. If you've not made one before, it takes a bit to work out where all the faces are. Obviously, you don't have to, I've just put numbers. I'm not very creative. If you were one of these doodling mathematicians, you would draw pictures or, you know, be artistic. I've just numbered it, which is a bit sad. I'm it's number very file. sorry. It is number file. It's not doodle file, is it? So I've numbered it. So you can be as creative as you want and you can spend a while trying to find them. But if you are into numbers, after a while, you're like, hang on. I know there are only six faces, but what combinations of faces can I get at the same time? Obviously I can get one opposite two, because what I started with, I can get three opposite one. Can I get three opposite four? Can I get five opposites? Like, what combinations of faces can you see at the same time? And that was the first thing I started wondering uh, when I played with one of these. And for a while, I thought, ah, right, you can get Combinations of faces, but there's always a one and a two. You never lose those original two faces. But no, no, here's a five opposite of four. So you can you can get reasonably lost, right? The original two faces are long gone. We have two new faces on the outside. And I, when I had one of these, I was like, I want to work out the logic behind this. What is it which means I can get different pairs? And which ones are possible? And how do I go between them? And so I drew a diagram. Okay, diagram. We're going to use colors because that's how we roll here. This is as close to artistic as we get. So, uh, what face is definitely possible? So, I first did this. Actually, I didn't do colors. What I did, I was kind of lazy. I was like, okay, I'm going to label that as being one, uh, two. So, that's not a fraction, a half. It's a one opposite of two. I was using my own notation. And then I went, okay, I can go from that to one, three. So, I put one, three on my diagram. And then I realized, I was like, wait a minute. One face always stays there. So whenever you flex, whichever one goes on the outside is still there when you open it up. You only change one at a time. So when you go from one three to one two, the one doesn't change. I was like, well, I can kind of imagine those ones being linked. And so I can go from one three to one two. If I keep the three, I can get to three six. So over here somewhere, I've got six and three and I've kind of linked those up like that, right? And I started drawing the network to try and work it out. I'm going to show you the network I ended up with because I'm particularly pleased with it. First of all, I'm going to put this back to the, its starting state. One's going to be red. So there's, there's one and one can be opposite. Let's do light blue. It can be light two. Okay, there we go. There's two, right? So one is opposite two. Okay, so let's see. What else can I get opposite one? Well, I can go from one that can be opposite three. Okay, so I can have one three, so I'm gonna put one three down here, that can be purple, I'm gonna, or one can be opposite. So actually it's horizontal and vertical. So if I fold it vertical fold, you get three. If I fold it horizontal fold, you get the other one. So that's five in there. So five, you're gonna be an orangey color. And we'll put five up here. And so what I've done is I have run all the ones in a line down here. So this is all the ones you get which have a one in them. And so I've still kind of got them on either side. So you can see what's going on there. Okay, we'll do two next. So two, if we fold it uh, horizontally, it's opposite six. So that's two opposite six that way. So that's gonna be six with two. And then if I hadn't folded it horizontal, if I fold it vertically, two is opposite four. So four is gonna be dark blue. And so that's gonna be down here. So now I have lined up all the faces with two, and actually we've got another line going this way. So there are the five combinations we found first and how you can go between them, but there are other ones. So if I go uh, four, two, let's go back over here. There's one, two in the middle again. Let's go out to one of these. Let's go out to one opposite five, so over here. If I keep five there, I can get five opposite four. Okay, four's over here. So what I can actually do is extend the five line down here, and then I can extend the four line up here, and now I've got five, four, and that predicts I can pop down here to four, two, because I've, I've preemptively locked that in, but if I keep four on the outside, close it, sure enough, there it is, four, two. So that's dropped me down there, and I predict on the opposite side over here, if we extend six down there, and we extend three up there. That predicts we're gonna have a six, three over there. Sure enough, uh, let's get over that side. Uh, where should we go? So we're at four, two. Let's go back to two, one. Oh, back at two, one, done that. Let's go, let's go down. We'll go to one, three. Which way is that? Here we go. There's one opposite three, and then we should be able to pop up there to be three opposite 
six. Sure enough, there it is. There's three and six, right? And then that's it. These other ones, they don't fill in. But I was able to create, it's kind of a graph, but I've put some structure into it. I've had straight lines, so I've got six different colored lines, and whenever two of those lines cross, that combination of faces is possible. So originally I just kind of sketched them all over the place, and then I realized there was some logic underneath them, and I was able to then arrange it to show the structure behind what combinations of faces are possible, and that pleased me immensely. So I've been throwing some names of flexicons around. The way it works is you've always got the number of faces followed by the number of edges followed by flexagon. So this has got four edges. So this is a tetra flexagon. And because it's got six faces, it's a hexa tetra flexagon. Six faces, four edges, flexagon. So the ones you see online all the time are hexa flexagons because they're made from hexagon. They've got six edges and then have many faces. The easy one, the one you see all the time is the trihexa flexagon. So you've got three faces. This one gives you six out of the box. With a lot of work, you can make a hexa hexa flexagon. So six edges, six faces. My goodness, it's a real pain. So the trihexa takes a bit of work making a chain of nine equilateral triangles, technically 10 because you want to glue. Once you've got those 10, you've got to fold them and glue them and you only get three faces. If you make a chain of 19 equilateral triangles, you've got to fold it, you've got to fold it again, you've got to glue it right, you've got to realize you did that wrong, pull it apart, in my experience, and a lot of effort later, you get six faces. Whereas this, no glue, no messing around, cut out a square, cut out a smaller square, bit of folding, six faces are all yours. And the middle bit, guess what you can do with this? I think we all know what we're gonna do with this. You're gonna make yourself a smaller tetraflexagon. And the bit you cut out of that, you're gonna make a smaller one again, right? You're gonna make fractal. You're gonna make gradually smaller and smaller, an infinite <laughs> series of diminishing. They do approach a limit of total amount of paper. Hexatetraflexagons like, ah, this, the forgotten flexagon is best flexagon. I've sat at a conference, albeit a recreational math conference, at the, at the conference dinner, and the person next to me has gone, do you want to see some new flexagons? <laughs> I've gone, yes. 